This is a single coronavirus unit. The coronavirus has been all over the news lately, as it spreads more rapidly than past disease outbreaks. Yet people don't seem to understand what a virus is and the trouble it takes to see what a virus looks like. But before we could explain why you can't look at a coronavirus under a microscope, we first have to understand what a virus is. The most basic definition of a virus is a microscopic parasite which can infect living organisms and cause disease. A virus is made up of genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and it is usually surrounded by a protective coat of protein called a capsid. Various forms of life exist, such as fungi, protists, bacteria, plants, and animals. The criteria for life can sometimes be ambiguous, and many people debate whether or not viruses are actually life at all. Compared to eukaryotic cells which make up plants and animals, and prokaryotic cells which make up bacteria, viruses are extremely small. Alright, so now that you know the basics about viruses, you need to know the basics of microscopy to understand why you can't see the coronavirus under a light microscope. Human eyes are great. They have a resolution of about 576 megapixels. Compare that to the 12 megapixel iPhone XR. However, they aren't perfect. Humans can't see things that are extremely small, and can't see anything smaller than 0.1 millimeters. Due to this, humans are forced to use other methods to see extremely small things. Humans first started with magnifying glasses in 700 BCE. With the development of eyeglasses, humans started to develop the first compound microscope. This microscope was perfected by several scientists such as Galileo and von Leeuwenhoek. Early magnifying glasses and these microscopes worked in essentially the same way. They bent light photons using a series of lenses and or mirrors. They took advantage of the fact that human vision was simply the sensing of the reflection of photons into the human eye. The only problem with this is that light microscopes are limited to seeing things that are larger than the photons that reflect off of them. For example, photon particles are around 400 to 700 nanometers. If you try to use a light microscope to see something smaller or similar in size to 400 to 700 nanometers, it would be like trying to use a dodgeball on a teddy bear. This is the category that viruses fit in. You see common eukaryotic cells are around 10,000 to 100,000 nanometers. Similarly, prokaryotic cells are around 1,000 to 5,000 nanometers. These sizes are significantly larger than the average size of a light photon. Therefore, a light microscope is a viable option to see significant detail at this size. So each of these are light microscopes. Each one requires a way for light to be passed through a specimen. So a specimen would be placed right here, light shines through this hole into the lens, into the person's eye. However, a typical virus is around 20 to 400 nanometers. Specifically, the coronavirus, which has been in the news lately, is around 100 nanometers. This is much too small for a common light microscope to be used. To cope with this, electron microscopes are used. Electron microscopes use small electrons in place of photons. An electron is around 0.1 nanometer. Back to our teddy bear comparison, this leans more throwing a golf ball at this size of teddy bear. By using smaller particles, an artificially colored image can be reconstructed using sensors that have collected the data of electrons bouncing off of a surface. Beautiful images, or you can say scary images like these, can be produced. And that is how we are able to see this image of the coronavirus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I put a lot of effort into these videos, so it really makes me happy when I see people liking my videos and subscribing to me. So please don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button. Anyways, please remember that I am microbially yours. Have a good day.